Hey everybody, this is Dan with Pain Free You. Today I have the pleasure of introducing Eleanor from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, she's pretty much a neighbor. We were just talking about that. Um, she was in a town that I lived in for a long while, probably lived within 10 miles of each other, five miles even. Uh, so welcome, Eleanor. I appreciate you being willing to share your success story here uh, with the intent that hopefully some people will be motivated or inspired by it or possibly learn something. So welcome. What what can you tell the, you. the uh the audience here about your story, your experience? Yeah. Well, my uh my story started uh almost 2 years ago when uh I had some dental work which seemed uh pretty innocuous. The dentist said I needed a crown. And so I had the crown put on and uh it started uh, hurting, it, which would seem pretty normal at first. You know, you have something done to your tooth, so. But uh, it didn't go away, so I went back to the dentist. He X-rayed it, and uh, he said, uh, "There's nothing wrong with your tooth. Uh, the pain should go away." So that was that was that, and it didn't go away. It didn't go away. It kept on hurting and he kept x-raying it so there's absolutely nothing wrong the crown wasn't even close to the nerve um right. so uh he he thought it was neuralgia he said i think it's neuralgia and and i had had a history of that many many years ago i had something similar happen and it it nobody knew what it was and eventually it went away after a year. Um, so I think, uh, and then he said, he said, well, maybe you can go to a root canal specialist and you know make sure that there's nothing wrong. Um, so I was all in on that. I thought, well, maybe I need a root canal. I was kind of looking forward to that because it was hurting and it was keeping me up at night. So finally, uh, I did go to an endodontist and um, he didn't even check to see if there was anything wrong with the tooth. He, he just did a root canal. He did a root canal and I was happy at first and it didn't hurt. Uh, then it started hurting again and my heart really sank. I thought, well, that dentist, my dentist was right. It was neuralgia and i've i've had a needless root canal i was i was almost convinced of that so um it just kept on hurting and hurting and and it would go away for periods of time but it, it continued to hurt and i knew that the root canal had not done anything so then uh i um i made an appointment with the top facial pain specialist in philadelphia mm -hmm. And uh, at that point, the, the pain was a very low level. It was like a one to two, I would say, but it was chronic. It was just uh, almost all the time. So I went to this top facial pain, pain specialist and honestly, that was a terrible, terrible experience. He, well, he said I had neuropathic pain, which is just a general term. Um, yeah, but that term has actually been utilized in the TMS world. Mm -hmm. you know, I know Alan Gordon, Dr. Schubner have used the term neuropathic pain, right? but it doesn't pinpoint to a physical cause. Oh. They're saying that's oh. neuropathic pain coming out of the brain. Right, right. So all of the diagnoses, uh, and, and the other diagnosis eventually was uh, atypical trigeminal neuralgia. Yeah. And uh, all of these uh, diagnoses are are simply by the patient's report. There, there is no absolutely no evidence. As uh, you know, I clued into that after uh, yeah. working with you that there there is no evidence. So it seemed like, oh my God, my trigeminal nerve is, you know, the problem. It, it damaged my trigeminal nerve, even though there's there's absolutely no evidence. And by, by co complete coincidence, I had had some 
uh, brain scans about a year before due to some uh, tinnitus that I had to, to rule out anything serious. And there was nothing wrong with me. So I'd already had these brain scans and, and that's what people have, you know, when they have this trigeminal neuralgia. Um, so I knew that there was, there was nothing wrong with my trigeminal nerve, but that was it. I felt that there was something wrong. Uh, so he, so this uh, facial pain specialist, who's who's very well known, um, but doesn't get back to you when you ask him questions. And so that was one of the terrible things. He he put me on a type of anticonvulsant, and not only did it not help the pain, but it it made me. And I, I don't know if it made me very anxious and depressed. I think I was already very anxious and very depressed. Right. Um, so eventually, you know, I went off of that and he tried something else and that seemed to work a little bit. Um, but this is a, the incredible thing about this experience with the facial pain specialist is the day after I went to him, um, and 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 I mostly saw his resident. Actually, he was just in and out, but it was it was a very nice resident. But he he didn't really spend much time with me. The very next day, my pain went from a one to two to a ten. Now, at the time, I thought that's just an incredible coincidence that that would happen. Mm -hmm. Now I know that the reason that happened is because I suddenly felt like I was a sick person. I had a diagnosis. And so, yeah. but at the time, I, I thought a lot of things were coincidences. I didn't realize what what the reason for these uh, these things were. Um, mm -hmm. So, basically, I, I got into a terrible state of depression, anxiety. Uh, I, I developed uh, a lot of other symptoms. I developed numbness in my mouth. I developed pain in other areas. I de <laughs> I developed very severe tinnitus, which was really horrible. And I, I went to, uh, I started going to many doctors, ear, nose and throat specialist. Uh, um, I, I just uh, felt, developed so many other uh, symptoms. Uh, I really felt like a sick person. I developed a sensitivity to sound and I, I play the cello and I had to stop playing the cello because the, the sound of the strings uh, set off the pain. Uh, and so I, you know, you're I was... Never, a, you're never going to uh, guess. Uh -huh. From elementary school through college, I was a cellist. You're kidding. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know I, you're I, a musician. You play the I, guitar. I still have it. I still, it's in the closet right now. Wow. Wow. That's great. That is great. I, I just started playing the cello uh, when I was 55. So, uh, but I, I'm a musician. I play the piano and I, I, I was a professional singer and, and a piano teacher. So, uh, so we, we do have the music thing in common. That's, Absolutely. Uh, that's really interesting. So um, sound sensitivity, you mentioned sound you sensitivity, numbness, or... tinnitus. Uh, I, I, there must uh, anyway. I I really my life shut down mm -hmm. um, for definitely a couple of months. I I had to stop playing in my chamber groups. Um, now I know I really didn't have to do that, but you know, I was very depressed to the point where I just really couldn't get out of bed and. Mm -hmm. um, my son was wonderful and my husband my son is a massage therapist and he came over and he did some you know type of massages and just you know making me feel better but um <clears throat> it was uh it was a terrible time and and uh it it hurt to eat and it hurt to talk and the these were th that was actually one of the worst uh, some of the worst things um i started only first i started only eating on the other side mm -hmm. and uh, then i felt that even that was really giving me pain so i started only eating pureed foods and and that and that was extremely depressing i just couldn't participate in eating and uh, it also hurt to talk i couldn't talk too much um so 
then I, I managed to get an appointment with a, a neurologist that my dentist had recommended. And it's very hard to get an appointment in Philadelphia with a neurologist. So I was very thrilled. And, and she was a very, very lovely uh young neurologist and she said oh you've been just put on the wrong medication this is not the first line approach for this atypical trigeminal neuralgia um, you need to be on uh, tegretol so that's that's what she put me on and and honestly it seemed to work at first uh, after she upped the dose a little bit um, suddenly one day I was like, oh, I can eat on that side and I can talk. And that lasted for a while, but then it stopped working and she didn't have any re she, I, I told her no, this yeah. and, and she really didn't have a reason uh, for that. But, um, oh, the other thing was, uh, after a while, when she started upping the dose, I had visual problems. That was what happened. I was playing with my quartet and suddenly the music was like swimming in front of my eyes and she felt it was maybe that medication. It turned out to actually be another medication because I was on two different things. One was a muscle relaxant and I think that that had been up too much and it, it gave me uh, what, they, what she said was nystagmus. So, um, and then she put me on a different anticonvulsant and, and that didn't seem to work at all. So I told, so then she put me back on the original anticonvulsant and, uh, and that didn't seem to work anymore. It just, the, the dose that had worked didn't work anymore. Now, of course, Dan, having, you know, worked with you and your method and read books, uh, I, I realized that all of these things were, were really placebo effects and uh but they also made me feel like a very sick person uh i i just felt that i was very unwell um that there was something terribly wrong with me people were very very sorry for me and i was very sorry for myself um i did have one uh one success that i didn't realize how much of a success it was uh I went, I had one Zoom session with a therapist, a psychotherapist, and I only had one session because then it, it just hurt so much to talk that I really couldn't go back. But in the one session, she said to me, you have to go back to living your life, even with pain. And I, I said, really? I just that just was a foreign concept to me. Like I have so much pain, you know, and I was so focused on it. So uh, I actually did take her advice and, and I, it was hard, but I started uh, playing cello again and I started, uh, you know, having people over, even though I felt terrible, I, I really felt terrible. I felt very anxious and depressed, but um, that, that was kind of a turning point. Um, huge. I went for acupuncture, two different acupuncturists, um, one acupuncturist week after week said, oh, your swelling is going down. And I kept telling her there, there is no swelling. You know, another name for this, uh, this disorder is, is phantom tooth pain. So there, there really is not a problem. You know, you don't have a physical problem. It's like phantom limb pain where you've, you've had your limb removed and, and you still have, have pain in it. So um, I, I tried acupuncture. Uh, the second acupuncture was, was absolutely wonderful. She listened. She spent a lot of time with me talking about my trigeminal nerve. And, you know, uh, she said, your trigeminal nerve is angry. <laughs> so that was good. she just spent a lot of time talking to me. And that was, that was quite soothing. But the acupuncture itself didn't uh, really do anything. I... Uh, I oh at one point I thought well maybe it is the diet maybe I should try an anti-inflammatory diet and that seemed to work at first too everything seemed to work for for a time and then and then didn't so I'm sure you and everyone are well, familiar. I think a lot of that stems from here's something I can do and now I have a little hope which means mm -hmm. my fear and the perception of danger comes down a little bit and it works for a little bit that's right. and then that's it. That's right. So it, it, everything worked for for a time, and then and then it didn't. Uh, 
The other thing is that the pain did go away for periods of time, and I didn't clue into what that meant. Um, so even at the very beginning, I was visiting my daughter in Toronto, and I was having this pain, and I, I thought, well, maybe there's something wrong with the root canal. So I, I made an appointment with the dentist there, and he had took an x-ray, and he said, there's, there's really nothing wrong. And, and when I walked out of his office, I didn't have pain, and that lasted a couple of days. So, you know, in retrospect, I, I realized what the meaning of, of that is, that, that there was not a physical problem. And so the pain was being produced in my brain, as you yeah. have taught. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, I did, you know, I did get somewhat better and I started living my life. And, but the pain was there. And, and in the mornings, I would wake up thinking, you know, what kind of day is this going to be? Am I going to have pain? And uh, um, yeah, you know what that's like. And so does everybody. Yeah, sure. People watching this. So when um, did you find out about TMS, mind body stuff and start connecting the dots? Yeah, well, it, it it was it was a fluke, of course, as things are. Um, I did. Uh, I finally, my husband kept telling me, uh, "You've got to get some therapy." He was he was getting burned out. He he is absolutely wonderful, my husband. I can't say enough about him. But um, he was getting burned out with my constant talking about it, and you know him supporting me so uh, he wanted me to get some uh, go to a therapist so finally i did i uh, found a therapist that said she specialized in chronic pain so and it was in person which was nice so i went to her and and she really did not help me she was trying these very odd i thought it were very odd things like tapping and uh, other things that uh, they just didn't resonate with me i didn't feel like she was helping me but on the the fifth session she said you should read this book and it's called unlearn your pain yep. by dr schubiner so I, I, and i was wondering why did she take so long to tell me about this book well she had so, to get the thousand dollars out of you first uh, maybe maybe i, I yeah respect. i'm kidding I, I, I know i know that right that's that's a thought um so i got the book and it was like, oh my goodness, this is an amazing theory that it is a mind-body issue. Um, so in the book, it said, uh, contact us. And I thought, well, what can I lose? And contact Dr. Schubiner's office and make an appointment. So I ended up uh, having an appointment with the nurse practitioner. I could have had an appointment with Dr. Schubiner, but it was a really a lot of money. And, and basically, uh, well, just to backtrack a little, nothing I read had anything about facial pain. It had a lot about a, a lot of other types of pain, sure. uh, you know, uh, certainly back pain, <clears throat> excuse me, migraines. And uh, GI problems, but uh, really, uh, my basic reason for having the appointment was to find out: uh, is this mind-body syndrome, and is anything to do with facial pain, trigeminal neuralgia? Is that mind-body? So, I had an appointment with the very nice nurse practitioner, and she spent an hour with me, and she asked me a lot of questions and and she said yes yes it, it is mind body syndrome i i told her all the ins and outs and that it had gone away for periods of time and so and she, and got extremely worse when they gave you a diagnosis which is right. a diagnosis right. of something that the online literature is very scary and so all of a sudden it was like i have this diagnosis the pain jumps and things get That's worse right. That's, that's right. And, that's, and, that, that's and then that did not occur to me at the time. I thought it was just an incredible coincidence. So the, uh, the other thing was I joined a Facebook support group. And at first it was great. I think, well, there are 5,000 people that have the same problem. Uh, right. There's one support group for trigeminal neuralgia, one for atypical, which is what I had, uh, you know, the kind of chronic uh, pain. Mm -hmm. And I uh, learn all about the different uh, uh, surgeries and, and gamma knife, uh, cyber knife, uh, neurosurgery. What I also learned is that a lot of people are put on these anticonvulsants and they don't work. 
and they keep getting more and more and more and they the doctors put them on two or three different types and yeah. after a while it was it was so so negative and triggering okay so i so i had the appointment with dr schubiner's uh nurse practitioner right. uh, she she gave me some things to do which she gave she told me to read uh, a self-help book by brene brown and i was like eh, you know i've been there done that I, that didn't really resonate with me i i didn't really do much i i made another appointment with her but in the meantime, I, I kept on searching and Googling for uh, mind-body syndrome and uh, trigeminal neuralgia or atypical trigeminal neuralgia. I, I did it a number of times, but I, and I kept doing it. And I think on the second or third time, I came up with one of your videos. And it was on that very disorder. Uh, mm -hmm. trigeminal neuralgia and you uh, you talked it wasn't a success story it was you were just talking about My opinions it, yeah it's trigeminal neuralgia mind body syndrome mm -hmm. um and i i was just I was just awestruck. <laughs> I, I said to my husband, come on, you know, you've got to watch this. This is incredible. And you were talking about a woman that had uh, been diagnosed with trigeminal neuralgia and had, had nine neurosurgeries and everyone, they said, this is definitely going to work and it didn't work. And you, you didn't talk about the outcome of, of your working with her, but it was, it was exactly, not exactly what I had, but it was, it was very similar. Yeah. And, uh, you know, basically I started watching your videos um, and suddenly my hope just jumped. And, and, and that's what it's all about and is hope. For so long, I, I had been told that there is no cure for this. Even the, this very nice neurologist, I said, well, do you think it'll go away? She says, no, no, you'll need medication. And the medication wasn't working. So that, you know, really got me into a, a very big depression. And then when, when sometimes it would go away for periods of time, uh, I would think, oh, it's gone away. And then when it started again, that kind of plunged me into a, into another depression. Right. So my, I first discovered you, uh, last July. So it wasn't, it was not quite a year ago. Mm -hmm. And it, immediately it had um, it had a big effect on me. No, I didn't buy into it completely right away. And as you say, and as, as you said, people don't. Yeah. Um, I started believing it eh, first, you know, 80 percent and then you know, I would say, well, this is it. This is really fabulous. And then, you know, I would have pain and uh, it would be, you know, and then, and so once, uh, when I was really truly starting to believe it, I started having a lot of pain one night. I went out to a movie and uh, I decided to email you. So <laughs> I emailed you and, and you were great. You got right back to me and you once again reiterated that it was uh, the perceived danger pain, the brain perceived danger. And, and, and so that caused the pain and it got a lot better after that. <laughs> so I, 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 I think that was, that was kind of a turning point for me when I realized that yeah, that was right. That was right. A because message was, okay. of clarity, a message of safety. Mm -hmm. Your symptoms got better. That's, That's right. not a coincidence. That's how it right. works. That's and right. you were you were open enough to say, look at that. Holy crap. That this stuff is real. Yeah. And it started making a lot more sense to me. Like, yeah, you told me that it was my brain perceiving danger and that's what it was. And, and the pain stopped. So, you know, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't completely uh, stop. Um, but I started buying into it uh, much more. So at that point it was, I'd say 90%. And, uh, so another turning point was when, uh, and I was, uh, I had joined your support group. So uh, when you asked for, you know, success stories in the support group, I told you about this 
evening I had with a friend where I went out with her and I was like, I decided I'm not going to be afraid. I'm going to eat on that side and I'm going to talk and I don't care. I don't care if it hurts. And I, I spent a lot of time, uh, she, she also actually had a lot of uh, physical symptoms. So I was uh, talking to her about your method and talk, 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 talk and eat. And, and I, I felt great. I felt great. And that was, that was a real turning point for me. Now it wasn't a smooth sailing completely, uh, of course. Um, but over time I stopped, uh, thinking about it so much and and then i learned from you to uh, notice your symptoms with indifference so i stopped catastrophizing as much because uh, there was a lot of catastrophizing and that that was so terrible um you know this is going to be my life I read stories about uh, on the support group, um, yeah. not your, the, you know, the other support group. I heard stories about people that were on disability because of their pain and, and uh, you know, they'd had the pain for 30, 40 years. And oh, my God, that was it just struck fear into my heart, a lot of fear into my heart. And and the other thing was that people said and doctors said it, it gets worse over time. Well, now I say, yes, it gets worse over time because you're focusing on it. That's what you're thinking about all the, the time. Grows and the catastrophic thinking grows and the belief that I'm broken grows. And that's why it gets worse. That's right. The belief that you're broken, that that's a big thing. You, you feel broken. You feel there's something really terribly wrong with you. Um, so and. So I determined I was going to, you know, eat solid food on that affected side, not just on the other side, which I had been. And at first I, I did get more pain, but uh, I thought I'm just going to, I'm going to stick with this. And uh, over time I, I was able to forget about it for periods of time. And if it came back, which it still sometimes does, but I'm able to just, as you say, notice it. It's kind of like a meditative technique that you have where you just kind of, it's off to the side. Um, you say, oh, there it is, and it's going to go away. Um, and it does. How quickly for you? How quickly you're saying? Yeah, when if, it, if you should uh, get some, some symptoms. Uh, does it well, take? sometimes if, I, I find if I'm under some type of stress, it can it can last on and off for you know a week or so. But it's it's an on and off thing, and I'm just like, okay, hello there, <laughs> hello there. Um, I, I'm able to not focus on it. Yeah, if I can jump in, uh, yeah. there's going to be some people who go, Eleanor is not a success. She still gets the symptom, and to them, I'm going to say. She is a success because it is no longer chronic. Yeah, that's right. It's no longer persistent daily all the time. So she is a huge success. And why I say you, Eleanor, are a success is because you have recovered from the fear, yeah. which was the fuel driving it for as long as you had it. That's right. That's so right. To any naysayers out there to go, oh, she still gets symptoms. The brain still reserves the right to protect us by turning on symptoms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The key here though, for everybody watching and listening is that Eleanor knows what it is. She doesn't panic. She notices it, says, oh, hello there. Doesn't fuel it with additional fear, worry, catastrophic thinking and goes on with her day. And the brain interprets her response as, oh, she's really not in danger. And whether it be on and off for a week or, you know, could be gone in hours, depending on what's going on, it's it doesn't become chronic again. Mm -hmm. That's right. I want to make, make sure people really understand that the presence of pain is not a failure, is not proof that this process doesn't work because some people will argue, well, oh, that sucks. I want to be permanently better. Yeah. Then you don't want to be a human because yeah. it's a human condition. The key is if you don't buy into the fear and the thinking and the worrying and the, you know, doomsday feeling, it doesn't stay. That's right. So that is that's gone. Thing. That is that's gone. That is gone. The catastrophe. Why the symptoms don't stick around. Yeah, that's right. 
and and they're very mild when they do when they come back um and and, and sometimes the it, it used to they used to come back when i would be talking about them to a friend or something and I'd, I'd say oh yeah okay that's what happens you're focusing on it you know you but it, it's miraculously better <laughs> here's what and, i'll point out to you and everybody listening um the more we talk about and think about our pain yeah the bigger it gets that's right. Because we're giving all this mental and emotional energy to the pain and the brain's got no choice but to go, wow, we got a problem because this is all Eleanor can think about and talk about. That's right. That's and right. And that's exactly why when you were talking to somebody and telling them about this pain experience, it started to come around. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's a general recommendation. Folks, don't talk about your symptoms. That's not yeah. helping. It's not part that's of the solution. True. That's right. So, you know, my state of mind just completely changed. And uh, I, I go for months without thinking about it at all. And then once in a while, like, oh, there it is. And it's going to go away. And it does. Um, you know, I had some uh, dental work done. And, uh, you know, I had some some mild pain. Um, and I knew it was going to go away. And, and it did. So, uh, I had the same thought. I thought, am I a success story? <laughs> you are. You know? And that's yeah. why I really wanted to make an extremely yeah. pointed point. Like, this is absolutely what success looks like. Because mm -hmm. even people like Dr. Howard Schubner, myself, uh, there's a Nicole Sachs, who is one of the leading people in this industry. We all still get symptoms once in a while. But yeah. we know what they are. Yeah. We don't fear them. We give That's them right. little to no concern. That's right. And they go away quickly. Yep. 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 I have recovered from chronic pain. I had 13 years of back pain and sciatica. I don't have chronic pain anymore. Do mm -hmm. I get a little twinge once in a while that lasts half an hour, a couple hours? Mm -hmm. Longest I had was about a week. And that was mm -hmm. during um, my mother's stroke and the recovery and sitting with her at the hospital and then the rehab and managing everything and it was a very stressful time yeah. emotionally yeah. chaotic yeah. um and it lasted yeah. a week yeah. but i didn't fear it that's right eventually went so for anybody thinking i want a success that i never feel anything again in my body is unrealistic we get better when we recover from the fear. And Eleanor, you've done that brilliantly because now you, well, I know what that is. I'm not concerned. Yeah. It'll, it'll pass. And it does. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it, you, you are a godsend, Dan. You are a godsend for me and for so many other people. And I've, you know, been to quite a few of your uh, group coachings and, um, you know, you have a you have a simple message, uh, which really resonated with me because the you know the methods of Dr. Schubiner, which was going into your past uh, traumas and journaling, and writing exercises. And I don't really. I mean, I suppose I could dredge up some past traumas, but I don't really have any big past traumas. And uh, however, you've also just proven that that wasn't the solution because you got better without digging up the old stuff. That's right. That's right. That's the key point here. That's right. Brain training, brain training. I, that's what I'm telling uh, you train my your brain. You just didn't have to call it that and do it proactively with the 16 step checkpoint. Yeah. By yeah. not thinking about it, fearing it, not fueling it with the fear and the attention, your brain learned, oh, we're that's really right. not in danger. Like all these brain rewiring programs, they're probably wonderful. Mm -hmm. I think it overcomplicates it. Yeah, yeah. Well, your your message is our so brain simple. knows what to do. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Brain training. Go, go live your life. Go live your life. If you get symptoms, indifference. <laughs> there they are. Hello. You know, I think of that Simon and Garfunkel song. Hello, darkness, my old friend. It's hello symptoms. <laughs> hello symptoms, yeah. and you let you let them go you don't uh, you don't focus on them uh, live your life uh, with or without pain um, and you don't have to you don't have to be in fear you don't have to catastrophize or be in fear so uh, 
I really thank you for the bottom of my heart. You, you're, you're a miracle worker. Well, humbled and thank you so much. Um, you're brilliant. I mean, you've just really <laughs> taken this information and applied it. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. as a result, you've overcome your fear, which has allowed yes. you to overcome your chronic symptoms. Yes. And I, I, I'm not. And oh, the other thing was I, I went off all my medication. Well, it, it was having terrible side effects. That's one thing I didn't go over. And I don't want to no. dredge it up right now. But uh, the side effects were worse than the original problem. Um, so I, I, I stuck with one medication for a long time after I started working with you. I just was kind of afraid to, I thought, well, maybe it's doing a little bit of good, but finally I was like, oh, I'm, I'm just giving it up. So I, I, I don't take anything and, uh, it's, uh, amazing. Awesome. And for anybody listening, um, depending upon the medication that you are on as the audience member, um, certainly work with your doctor on medication, tapering, withdrawal, whatever is safe. Some over-the-counter stuff you can just stop, but yeah, we don't have to get into what med and taper. I don't like getting into that too much, but if anybody's here listening to Eleanor saying, you know, I'm not on the meds anymore, don't assume she just stopped. Yeah. Assume yeah. I, 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 I knew how to taper off. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's very important with those kind of medications. It can... Uh, cause terrible problems if you don't taper so mm -hmm. beautiful anything else you want to share with the people watching uh, specifically anybody with trigeminal neuralgia yeah um well as you said pain is pain pain is pain and i you know i have the atypical trigeminal neuralgia now they you know the other type is this you know really horrible intense uh, pain i haven't had that um yours was more consistent and then yeah, it was consistent at more low level yeah stabbing you know yeah. more it of an impact of yeah um but atypical like if you even look that up i'm pretty much it's it's like of unknown origin or some very vague term right well i think it's atypical because it's not what people think of as trigeminal neuralgia which is this very intense pain that goes away you know it comes and then it goes and people some people have it multiple times a day but mine was uh, it, it is called atypical trigeminal neuralgia that's the that's the name for that uh, that's been given to this and it often starts after dental work um or it can also start after an accident, as I found out from the uh, the support group. Um, but oh. yeah, when you when you get a diagnosis, you feel sick. You feel sick. I that's what I have. I have. And then you start researching and get into the support yes. groups, which are all full of wonderful people, yeah. who unfortunately are all terrified by the oh, own diagnosis. Absolutely so, terrified. You know I. No offense to any of those groups, but um, hanging out with terrified people will make mm -hmm. you terrified. And it's, so, it's very, very triggering, uh, very triggering to read people's uh, stories and uh, terrible story, really terrible stories. And sure. and then read that it gets worse over time. And, and, and now I see it gets worse, yeah, it gets worse over time because you're catastrophizing, you're fearing and you're focusing focusing all the time yeah but but i just also want to point out that's not anybody's fault mm -hmm. it's where you get to it's where you end up due to as i always say misinformation and fear mm -hmm. misinformation mm -hmm. that i am sick i'm broken there's something wrong with my nerve it's mm -hmm. never going to get better that's the misinformation yeah. that creates a massive amount of fear the brain perceives a massive amount of danger yeah. creates a, a symptom of varying levels from one to two to 15 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um we're not sick folks you're not broken uh this facial pain that they've labeled trigeminal neuralgia mm -hmm. that they will diagnose just simply based on your description of your experience not based on any medical findings there's no blood tests there's no imaging study there's no proof sometimes they'll be like well your vein is up against the nerve yes yeah. that's all over the place our veins and nerves run parallel all the time 
Right. And some people, uh, as I found out from the support group, keep going from doctor to doctor, finally finding a doctor that sees that the nerve is pressing uh, on a vein. And, and so they're so happy because finally they can get the neurosurgery. Yeah. And I don't know what the the outcomes are. I, I know that some of the neurosurgeries make things worse, and I found that out on the support group. And so I determined immediately I'm never getting surgery because it could make it worse. And that's what, well, what happened with that. And with I'm not sure it damages the body because yeah. the body heals, but it yeah. could allow the symptoms to get worse because of the the hope I got the surgery and the despair that I didn't get better. And right. now that is a huge perceived danger that, holy crap, I got the best surgeon in this part of my country or world, and right. that didn't even work. Oh, no. And right. Right. Get worse. I'm, I'm gone. I'm done for. Yep. Yep. I'm not convinced the surgeon did anything to the body that harmed you because yeah. the body heals from surgeries yeah. tens, hundreds of thousands of times a day around the world. So the body yeah. always heals. So I don't think surgeries necessarily make you worse from a physiological standpoint, but they can well, that, the impact that's right. and I, I, thoughts and psychology. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for a long time, I felt that the root canal had made things worse. And I was very angry about that. Um, and, and I read that, yeah, you know, if you have more dental work, it makes things worse. And now I know that, yeah, it makes things worse because it didn't make it better. And then, you know, you, 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 you're more fearful and more catastrophizing. So I've been able to let that go, but there was a lot of, uh, you know, physical and mental agony involved in, uh, in this and, uh, it's gone. Home run. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah. I'm so pleased to hear that. So thank you so much. And, uh, your, your method is amazing. And, and, and I, I understand that you finished your book. I finished the rough draft. I'm working on revisions now, and then it will go to the editor within the next probably week to 10 days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the editor will spend some time with it, um, sculpting it, some design work, book cover, back cover, um, mm -hmm. interior font, layout, design, and then hopefully publish. It didn't take you that long. To, it seems like... Uh, yes, it did. It did take you oh, yeah. no, I, I've been probably writing since May. Okay. Okay. But I've been thinking about writing for years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, no, I've made a lot of progress in the past six months. Um, but no, I, this has been a project on my to do list for, for many years. But uh, yeah, the book will come out later in 24. I don't have an exact date yet. We got to get through the revisions, edits, design. And then, um, you know, I'll do a big book launch. Trust me, I'll be announcing it here on the on the YouTube channel and Facebook yeah. group. Um, I'll be spreading the word. So anything yeah. else? Or uh, I, I can't wait to read your book and uh, also share it with uh, with people from uh, from your from your point of view, not just mine. But uh, your uh, your method is amazing, tr truly amazing and, and very simple. Um, very simple. Yeah. Thank you so much. Eleanor, yeah. a real pleasure. If I can Stay ever do here. anything for you, you know where to find me. Yes, I do. Yeah. Uh, keep on playing that cello. Yes, I am definitely playing two different quartets. Yep. No, right. no problem now. No problem. Eating, talking, playing, uh, loud sound, nothing. Everything's fine. Right. Yeah. Wonderful. So thank you again. All right, everybody. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you.